Hello everyone, this is David Swindler with Action Photo Tours. As a workshop instructor, I get asked time and time again about tripods. What kind of tripod should I buy? What features should I be looking for? How best can I manage my tripod for best performance? So on and so forth. So I thought I would take a few minutes in this video to kind of cover some of those topics. In a previous gear tip video, I shared some of my uh, tripod techniques. This, in this video, I'm going to get even more specific into those tripod techniques. Here I've got three different tripods. They obviously can serve slightly different purposes. I like to have one tripod that works well for hiking, backpacking, and things where I need smaller form factor and lighter weight. And that also would include things like overseas travel, for example. But then I also like to have a bigger, heavier tripod that I can use when conditions are a little more adverse or when I just really want that extra height and stability. Now, as you look through here, you see these tripods have very different heights. Uh, this one here is the Photo Pro 64 series, the 64L, and it weighs in around three and a half pounds without the ball head. Uh, this one here in the middle is the Photo Pro 84 series, the 84C, and it weighs in just a little over five pounds without the ball head. And you can see it's, you know, without the center column extended, it's about my height. If I extend the center column up, it can put the camera quite a bit higher, clear up here. And you can see with the center column extended, it is the tallest tripod of the bunch here. Uh, this one here on the far end, is a tripod I've had for many years. And you know, there's been some things I haven't been real happy with, uh, with how it performs, especially in colder weather. And the leg locks, you know, they're not always as fluid as I would like, especially when they get wet or when it's really cold outside. But I will say that these Photo Pro tri tripods that I've been testing out and using over the past few months, I've been extremely happy with. They are very rugged pieces of equipment and they, they're in that perfect range of uh, weight versus stability. And the thing is, if you get the lightest tripod out there, even if it's as rugged as, uh, even though it may look really rugged and so forth, there is a certain penalty you will pay as far as stability goes when it starts getting windy. And so you still need to have some heft to your tripod in order to get the best stability in these adverse conditions. Uh, this tripod here is also five and a half pounds or so. Um, I should add that when you have the center column on this one, it does push it up around a little over six pounds. Okay, the five and a half pounds is without the center column. But let me show you, this thing is bomber. You know, it can hold so much weight. Look at that, it doesn't even move one bit if I put my entire weight on it. This tripod is also pretty solid but it's just not the same level of stability. You can see it kind of flexes and moves a bit as I kind of put some weight on it. And so, you know, that's kind of the difference between this brand and the PhotoPro tripods that I've been seeing. You know, these things are absolutely solid and bomb. Another thing that you want to look for in tripods is I like to have some sort of grip uh, to kind of shield my hands from the legs. And the reason you want that is so often, I'm carrying these tripods when it's really cold outside. And having your gloved hand right on, the, right on the carbon fiber, that gets really cold in a hurry. And so having this little bit of padding here makes a huge difference. Now don't go out and buy the aftermarket pads because they just don't work well. They slide all around, they move up and down. Um, if, you, if your tripod doesn't already have it, you can just make your own using pipe insulation and some gaffer tape. And that's what I've done with this tripod over here. And so a lot of manufacturers leave this part off because they want their tripods to have lower reported weight in the spec sheets, but it's something that you want. The other reason why I like it is so often I'm carrying my tripod around over my shoulder. And having these, this padding here makes it so much more comfortable to be carrying that, especially when I have a larger lens on the tripod. Now normally, I'm not a big fan of center columns. And that's been true with a lot of the older tripods that I've used because the center columns would be so flimsy. But I will say with these Photo Pro tripods, I've been very impressed by how sturdy the center column is. I mean, this thing is solid. 
it would take a really strong wind to cause vibration up there on that center column. Now, if it is really windy, yeah, I won't be using the center column. But for most uh, practical uses, I would have no problem leaving the center column in place. Now, the nice thing is, like both of these tripods here, they come with a little kit in the bag that allows you to swap out the center column with one that doesn't have it. But I will show you some features on this tripod in a little bit that will explain why the, tri the center column is not going to be detrimental. You'll still be able to shoot very, very low to the ground, and I'll show you how easy that is to do. Another thing that's uh, useful to have is a little clip where you can hang a bag or some weight, especially if you're going to be leaving your tripod unattended. And so having the center column makes it a lot easier to be able to hang that weight. Now this is a little hook that just screws in and out, and so I can easily remove it if I don't want it. But what I find is that these tripods that don't have the center column, it's extremely difficult to get anything to be able to hang in this little clip without it like hitting these parts of the legs of the tripod. And, you know, if the wind's blowing and, it's the, and in the bag you have hanging from here is slapping against the legs, well now you've just defeated the purpose. Now you're going to cause all kinds of vibration and you're not going to get sharp shots. Whereas if the bag is hanging lower like this, then it's really going to anchor this tripod nicely and give you a good, solid base. The smaller one also has the hook, but it's kind of a little retractable hook like this that can hang down like so. So I get asked all the time, why should I care about the height of my tripod? And indeed, a lot of times you are shooting low to the ground, but there are also many, many times where I will utilize this full height. Now, I may not utilize the full height on all three legs all at once, but there's so many places where I'm gonna be shooting where I'm on very uneven ground. It could be a steep hillside, it could be on some rocks out at White Pocket, and to get the composition I want, I need to be able to get a leg that can extend really long. And so having these taller tripods, I find it's worth every penny, and it's also worth the weight penalty, uh, because it allows me to get into those tighter, uh, more convoluted areas to be able to get my tripod up where it needs to be. So, you know, when weight does matter and I'm out backpacking and stuff, then yeah, I can make do with a smaller tripod like this. But I do definitely miss the height advantage that some of these beefier ones will provide. Now, I just got back from a five-day backpacking trip where I hauled this through all kinds of steep, glaciated mountains and super brushy terrain and everything. It held up well. It did just fine. You know, this thing is a really solid tripod for the weight. I have no problem using it. Um, but there are some times where, yeah, it would have been nice to maybe have a little bit more height. The other reason why I like having a tall tripod is sometimes you have to shoot over fences and other barriers. This kind of tripod struggles with that, and oftentimes to be able to shoot over something like that, I may have to compromise its stability slightly by leaning it forward like so to try to get up and over whatever that barrier is. Another reason to have a tall tripod is a lot of times when I'm shooting people, I like to make sure that the head of the person is encased within a non-distracting area. And oftentimes, if you're shooting lower or at the same height as the person, their head will be sticking up in the sky or hitting the top of the, the side of the canyon wall or something like that. If I can get this up higher, now I can aim down more and I can really clean up my compositions, especially when I'm shooting with a person in it. So yeah, there are definitely reasons to get a tall tripod, but there's also reasons to want to have a tripod that can go uh, very low to the ground. And so I'll cover that here in a little bit. The folded length of the tripod is also very important to consider because if you're going to travel and you need to put this into a suitcase or to carry it on a backpack, if it's too long, it may not fit well. And so let me just kind of show you a side-by-side -side comparison of these three so you can kind of see how they differ. I'll try to juggle all these tripods at once. So here I have the Photo Pro 64 series. Here I have the Photo Pro 84, and then I have my other one from a different brand. 
And you can see that they do vary quite a bit in folded length. This one will fit on a backpack much easier. Throw in a suitcase if you're going to be traveling. But this one will also fit within uh, a check bag suitcase, especially if you take the ball head off. Now, folded length is a really big concern for you. Uh, taking off the center column, like in this one, will certainly make it more compact. The nice thing about this tripod here is that it's super easy to take off the center column. Um, all you have to do is flip up this switch, hit the safety release, this comes out like so. And then there's another piece I can just go ahead and pop right in here, lock it down, and now I'm ready to put my ball head on. So super quick and easy, and now you can see the folded length is going to be much shorter. So there's another little tip if you do need uh, a tripod that has a little shorter length to go along with it. Now as far as deploying your legs, a lot of people I see will be out there in the field, they'll undo one, then they'll undo another one, then they'll undo the third one, and then they'll put it back the same way. They'll undo one, move it in, then they'll unscrew the next one, then they'll unscrew it really far, and put it in, and then screw it all the way back in. It's very inefficient. You know, the way I like to do it is, first of all, I extend the lowest segments first, and I only extend the uppermost, uppermost segments as I need additional height. And so I'll extend this one first, lock it in. All I need to do is a quick quarter turn. doesn't need much more than that. Another quarter turn, boom, lock it in. I need more height, another quarter turn, boom, lock it in. Now when I'm ready to bring this back in, then it's very simple too, it's kind of the same way. I just do a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, collapse them all at once, and then with one hand gesture I can grab all three and crank them tight. So that's typically the best way I like to do it. The reason why I like to do the, the lowest ones first is that let's say I'm in the field and I need to kind of level my tripod a little bit. Well, trying to reach down to add more length to this bottom leg here, that doesn't work for everyone. You know, and then chances are I might tip something over or trip over myself. Who knows what's going to happen. But when I have the uppermost leg uh, and I have room to move there, then it's really easy. I just adjust right here, right where I'm standing, and life is easy. So yeah, always, always deploy the lowest segments first and only go into the upper segments as you need additional height. Another important consideration is the tension you have on the legs. And this is a super important component to how sturdy your tripod is going to be overall. So often I see people running around with tripod legs that are loose and floppy. They can't even hardly carry it like this without the handle starting to flare out. Now, of course, when you have this set up, you know, if your legs are loose and floppy, then it's not going to give you nearly as solid of a base to shoot from. My rule of thumb is that these legs should be should require a little bit of force to kind of pull out like that. You should be able to feel that force. The reason why you want that is when you carry it with one hand, let's say I'm carrying it down here, I don't want this leg moving out on me. I want to just be able to carry it to the next spot, set up, and go. So the way that you control that tension is by making sure these bolts up here, this bolt and this bolt, are tight. Now, so a lot of these tripods, uh, you may have to have two Allen keys to be able to do that. that uh, the other brand I was showing you requires two Allen keys because the bolts work in conjunction with each other. But one thing I like about the Photo Pros is that you only need one Allen key to be able to loosen and tighten these bolts. One thing I found that works very well for me is to, when, and I like to do that when I first get a tripod, is I'll just go down to the hardware store and get a little bit of blue thread locker. Make sure you don't get the red thread locker, make sure you get the blue one. And then I will pop these bolts out, and I will put some blue thread locker right on the threads of that bolt and put it back in. And that way, these bolts won't work loose over time. Because that's something I absolutely hate. And it seems like it invariably will happen when I'm like overseas or somewhere where I can't get the right tools that I need to, to get things fixed. And so, you know, if you put a little bit of blue thread locker, tighten it down so you have the appropriate tension, you don't want it 
have it take a Hercules and force to crank that leg up, but it does need to have a good amount of tension on there. Get them all the same. You don't want one leg much tighter than the other. And you can also consider adding the thread locker to any other parts of the tripod that you don't think you'll ever be removing. Like if you're gonna put a ball head on here, and you're like, well, I'm never gonna be removing this ball head. Well, yeah, go ahead and throw some uh, thread locker here on these threads, put on the ball head, and now when you're rotating things around and stuff, the ball head isn't nearly as likely to come, come loose. The type of feet you have on your tripod also matters. For the most part, the rubber feet will do well for the majority of shooting purposes. But occasionally when I'm shooting in snow, ice, or wet and boggy ground, I like something that's gonna give me a better anchor. And that's one thing I love about the Photo Pro tripods is they have kind of two feet built into one. All I have to do is take this little rubber foot, pop it off, and now it converts into a spike that can be placed into boggy ground, snow, and ice. And then if I want the rubber foot back, especially for transport, you know, I don't want to be stabbing anyone or putting a hole in my backpack or anything like that, all I have to do is just pop the foot back off. Now with other tripod brands that I've used, yeah, you can replace the feet, but you have to have the extra feet with you or have them on the whole time. You know, this one here, I'd have to unscrew it, and then I'd have to get another foot to put on the tripod. After you've been shooting in a wet or dirty environment, it's very important that you ensure your tripod is clean and dry. So if I've been shooting like in, at the coast or in a river or anything like that, or even if I've had the tripod out in the rain, when I get home, I like to extend all the legs like so, and I'll just leave it extended until for a day or two until everything's kind of dried out. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you did get a lot of water coming up inside, you need to make sure that it's drained out. And the easiest way to do that is just pop off one of the legs. So I'll take this one here, just keep unscrewing the leg lock until it comes all the way out. And then this will pop out, you can pour any water out that's accumulated inside of the leg. At the same time, if I've been at the coast and there's a lot of sand and grit inside, then I'll take this shim off, this little plastic shim here, I'll clean any grit off of that. I'll take off this little leg lock, wipe it out, make sure all the sand is gone. And then, very importantly, make sure all the sand and grit is out of these uh, grooves right in here. If you leave the sand in there, it's just going to keep grinding away at your tripod, and eventually it's going to cause failures, and it's not going to last as long. So do your tripod a favor and clean it out whenever you shoot in those dirty, wet environments. Really easy to put it back. There's a, like a little groove here on the plastic shim. You just got to figure out where that groove is inside. Stick it back in. And then put the leg back on and then collapse away. So tripod maintenance is very simple. Just make sure that you do it and make sure everything's dried out. You don't want to be storing your tripod for a long period when it's been all wet, because yeah, it's not going to be quite the same when you dig it back out of the storage. So as promised, I'll talk about shooting low. Now, this is the 64 series Photo Pro. This is the 84 series. There's also a 74 series that I don't have, but it's kind of halfway between these two. And so that can kind of help you gauge exactly what you might want for your own personal use. Now, as far as shooting logos, this tripod here, it's like I was showing you before, it's super easy to take out that center call. You know, all you have to do is flip up this little lever over here, this little orange lever. Then there's a little safety release here, push that down, and out it comes. So if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of shooting low to the ground, well then you can just pop that out and, and not take it with you. Or you can just put this little piece right in your backpack and you'll have it for immediate use. So if I want to switch it out now to the center column, all I have to do is spin the ball head on, come over here, pop it in, and then tighten down the orange lever. Done. Now a really nifty feature of this tripod is that even with the center column in, I can still shoot very low to the ground. The way you do that is we'll pop it back out so, and then we just come in and we reverse it. 
And then once you kind of get it in place here, you have to push this guy, let it get up into place, lock it down. Now I can uh, release this guy. Oh, it's always opposite when it's upside down. And I can extend this down as far as I want to go, attach the camera upside down, and now I can shoot as low to the ground as I may want. Really handy feature, and if the legs get in your way, all you have to do is use these little locks, pop them out a bit wider. This will also help you get lower to the ground as well, as you can see. And then when I'm ready to go back to my normal shooting, again, really easy. I just release this clamp here, make sure the lock is off, switch it back around, and I'm ready to go. Here we are. So yeah, this tripod works very well with the center column. Like I said, this is I haven't found a tripod with such a sturdy center column before, so I have no problem shooting with it. But with more inferior tripods, I recommend taking the center column out because that tends to be the weakest point of the tripod. Now this guy over here, the 64, you know, I can't do the same little trick with it. You know, I can't just reverse the head. But it does come with a kit uh, with a little short column that you can put in in lieu of this longer column. And then that will allow you to shoot almost all the way to the ground. And again, you do the same thing. You know, you can just pull these guys out, extend these legs out as far as you need to, and you can get very low. Now here's a trick that I often will use if I'm shooting with a tripod with a center column. Obviously, this center column is going to restrict me from going low to where I can use, utilize all three of these legs. But what I do instead in this case is I'll like to use the center column as one of the legs. And I'll put it down like that. Now I've gotten myself much lower. Now I can put my camera on and shoot from that low angle perspective. Now I'm not going to be shooting like an inch or two above the ground like I could with the reverse setup on the 84 series. But for all intents and purposes, this gets me really close to what I'm are, to what I'm wanting and what I need. So again, handy little trick, you can just use that center column as a third leg. The Photo Pro tripods also come with three additional replacement rubber feet, which is really nice because you never know when one of these is going to get cracked, lost, or just fall off. Now they they fit really really snug, so I don't suspect that they would fall off anytime soon. But over time, you never know what might happen. So it's a good idea to have, hang on to these replacement feet for future use. They also come with three additional types of feet, these metal prong type of foot, which can be useful for certain types of shooting. And again, you can just pop off the metal foot here, unscrew the spike, and screw this foot in if you want to use that. Next, let's talk about ball heads. Photo Pro makes two different kinds of ball heads. One, the 7R ball head comes with the smaller 64 series tripod. The larger 9R ball head comes with the 74 and the 84 series. Uh, there is a little weight difference between the two. The smaller ball head is 1.2 pounds, whereas the larger ball head is 1.8 pounds. The larger ball head will be smoother and stronger but I found that the smaller ball head works just fine for my purposes out in the field. I have two words of caution. First of all, make sure you get a ball head that is Arca Swiss compatible. The Arca Swiss is the most universal type of camera mount. It looks like this here. This is a sample Arca Swiss plate. And it will work with the widest variety of equipment out there. This is really important if you're out with friends and you want to share tripods, so on and so forth. Avoid the brands like Manfrotto that make their own proprietary mount because those can be difficult to find replacement uh, plates for and also it can make it difficult to get an L bracket for your camera. Second, avoid pan and tilt heads like the plague. Those things are so difficult to work with. There's three different axes that you have to keep fiddling with and it's super hard to get things level. You often have to end up resorting to lowering tripod legs to get uh, the horizon level and so forth. Uh, just 
do yourself a favor, stick with the lighter, trusted and true ball head design, and it will make your life out shooting in the field much simpler. Now the PhotoPro ball heads, they all come with this little pan arm, which can be really useful if you think you might be doing some video work. All they do is you just screw right into the side here, like so. And this doesn't have to be attached, by the way. And then you can loosen your ball head a little bit. And now you've got nice fluid motion as you're panning around, you know, to take your video. The next tip is get an Arca Swiss compatible L bracket for your camera. These are specific to your camera model. So you'll have to look for ones specific, that specifically mate to, the, to that camera bot. And that is so you can access all your little ports and stuff on the side, get in and out of your battery and so forth. The reason this is so nice is that I can mount the camera both horizontally, like so. And if I want to go to portrait mode, I just flip it like so on the L bracket. And now I can shoot in a very stable fashion in portrait mode. Now, if I didn't have this L bracket, then the way you have to go to portrait mode is kind of difficult. You know, I have to drop it into this little knockout here. If it's leaning a little too far this way, then I'm going to have to adjust my legs to get it level. And then the camera is also off balance. And so it's more likely to get tipped or to fall over when I'm shooting in portrait mode. So getting the L bracket will definitely save you a lot of trouble in the field. The other thing that's great about the L bracket is that this doesn't loosen over time. Those little plates that you put on here, those loosen and get wiggly. And once those get wiggly, you can say goodbye to any kind of shooting stability. And sometimes those don't really tighten that, all that well out in the field. Conventional ball head designs typically have three separate knobs. You have the main locking knob, which is usually the largest of the three. And if you release that, then it allows the ball to move freely in all directions. And then you lock it down to, to, to be able to take your shot. There's another smaller knob which controls the rotation. You can rotate it back and forth. And then on most ball heads, there's a third knob which a lot of people get confused, and that tends to be the tension knob. The tension knob is one of those knobs that need to be set once and left alone. The problem with most ball heads and the way they're designed is that the tension knob is really easy to grab, and people commonly turn that instead of like the main locking knob or the rotation knob when they're making their adjustments. Now to set the tension knob, you want to mount the camera And then you want to loosen the main ball head. And you want the camera to still be able to move freely, but you don't want it to just fall over really quickly because there's too little tension. So you don't want to be muscling it around, but you still want it to uh, be able to have some amount of friction as you move it. And that's just a nice safety precaution because if this comes too loose and this falls forward unexpectedly, well, your whole tripod setup is probably going to topple over. Now, what I really like here about the, the PhotoPro setup is that they don't put a third knob on there for the tension. Instead, it's this little black ring right here. And in order to change it, I have to pop this ring out and then I can rotate it. So I can add tension by rotating this way, uh, decrease tension by rotating the other way. This is not a knob that I would ever accidentally move or adjust. So that way I'm always going to have a consistent amount of tension in my ball head. And that is one of the features I almost like most about these ball heads is just I can set the tension once and I can, and I can forget about it. I know it's always going to stay right where it should. Another nice feature is that this little twist lock here for tightening the camera down to the top of the plate, it has a little safety button right in the middle here. And in order for me to be able to pull the camera off of this thing, before I start unscrewing it, I have to push in this little safety button. And if I do that, then it allows me to unscrew it all the way, and off comes my camera. 
Now, if this gets loose accidentally, then the nice thing is my camera's not gonna fall off because there's nothing that has hit or triggered this little safety button. So a really nice feature there to help eliminate any dropped gear. And unfortunately, I see way too much dropped gear that happens in workshops. Uh, just, you know, people being careless with this kind of stuff. So this can really save you. And I found that this button works well even when I'm working with thick, heavy winter gloves. So you don't have to worry about uh, how ease of use in that regard. If you are working with a larger lens, like a telephoto lens, they will often come with a lens foot as part of the lens assembly. Now, rather than take an Arca Swiss compatible plate and mount it to that lens foot, I recommend that you get a replacement lens foot that is specific to that lens type. And these are very cheap. Now, you can get them for like 30 bucks on Amazon or eBay. And the nice thing about it is these plates they're gonna work loose over time. Sometimes it doesn't take very long at all. But these lens feet here, they're not going anywhere, it's solid. It's not gonna move on you. And then it allows me to easily mount the lens directly to the ball head. If I wanna shoot horizontally, I'm good to go. If I wanna shoot vertically, I just loosen this lens collar, rotate it, and now I can take a portrait-oriented shot. During this whole time, the camera is centered right over the tripod. I don't have any forward lean or backward lean or anything that might cause my setup to want to topple over. Well, everyone, I hope you found these tips to be useful and I hope they can help guide your decision on any future tripod and ball head purchases. Again, it's totally worth the money to buy quality gear up front. Buying the cheapo tripod initially it's only going to cost you a lot more in the long run because it's not going to work for your needs. You're going to end up having to replace it with something better at least some point down the road. So do yourself a favor, get good quality gear out of the gate, and then you'll actually enjoy using your tripod rather than having it be a chore to try to use every time. So if you're interested in purchasing any of the Photo Pro products, either tripods and or ball heads, uh, see the links in the comments below. And for a limited time, uh, they're giving 15% off all orders, and I'll have a coupon code that you can use to get that 15% off. All right, thank you, and until next time, bye for now.